Hi, I'd like to tell you a short story of my life. Come closer. To tell the story correctly, we must begin in 1976, when African students in South Africa organized themselves and led a revolt against the apartheid government, protesting against the Bantu Education Act of 1953. This defining protest was led and carried out by children who were fighting for their rights and set the continent on a course which changed us forever. It also happened to be the year my parents met for the first time. In 1990, the African heads of state came together to adopt the African Charter on the rights and welfare of the child. Meanwhile, something else was happening in 1990. On the 1st of January, amidst New Year celebrations, I was born. My father named me Amanda because it means worthy to be loved. All children are worthy of love, care and respect. And in 1990, the African Charter on the Rights and the Welfare of the Child set out to define core principles for the status of children. I arrived into this world just in time. Fast forward to 1999. As nine-year-old me walked through the gates of my secondary school for the first time, a tiny, scared, but also incredibly excited child, at that moment, across the breadth of the African continent, the Charter on the Rights and Welfare of the Child came into force. You can say that in 1999, the Charter and I both entered a new era. We both turned 17 in 2007, the Charter and I, both of us on the cusp of adulthood. I was in my second year of university when the second Pan-African Forum on Children was held. In Lagos, I attended school, made friends, searched for my place in this world, a place where I fit. While over in Cairo at the second Pan-African Forum on Children, the clarion call was for accelerated action towards an Africa fit for children. 2012 was a year of taking stock. At 22, I began to reevaluate my purpose in life as a young African woman trying to make an impact in my environment. That same year, the African Union held the third Pan-African Forum for Children to also take stock of achievements at the end of the call for accelerated action towards an Africa fit for children plan of action. In the shared journey of the Charter and I, 2012 was a year of learning, reinforcing and making commitments to do better for ourselves and for those who rely on us. By 2016, the African Committee of Experts on the Rights and Welfare of the Child adopted Agenda 2040, which, through 10 solid aspirations, has strategies for sustaining and protecting children's rights in Africa and restoring the dignity of the African child. By 2016, I had aspirations too. I had fulfilled some of them, like getting a master's degree, and others were well within my reach. I was empowered to dream because of the freedoms I enjoyed from my childhood, from a family which cared for me and gave me access to quality education and opportunities, to an immediate society which respected my rights and gave me the space to express myself as a child and now as a youth of Africa. In 2040, I'll be 50 years old. <laughs> Imagine that! As I look back on my life so far, I understand the impact the Charter on the rights and welfare of the African child has had on me and how access to these rights have shaped me for good. 30 years after the adoption of the Charter, 49 countries in Africa have adopted it. Today, the Charter and I are 30 years old and we work for the protection and promotion of the rights of every African child born after me. I am so proud to build where those before me have planned and to contribute to the creation of an Africa fit for all children.